Today I want to show you guys a technique for approaching birds and that's actually to not approach birds. It's to allow birds to approach you. And it's my favorite way of photographing birds and wildlife. And it's basically just coming out into nature to a forest like this, sitting down, waiting for birds to come to you. This is my favorite way of spending time in nature. And that's to just sit here quietly in their environment and let the birds approach me instead. Because when you're walking, if you're walking around, and you're continuously flushing out and scaring birds and they just fly away from you and away from you. Whereas if you actually Take the time, find, find a good location, and just sit down and wait. You can get just magical stuff happen. And that's what's happening here now. These red starts are coming back here again and again. And they're really not bothered by me. And I'm just wearing kind of earthy tones here, like just green, brown, and just sitting, watching, being quiet. I think you do have to be careful with when you do when you do photography like this is to kind of take your cue from the birds. Um, if they're stressed and if they don't like you there, they'll let you know. They'll you know they'll give alarm calls. They'll just keep calling, calling, calling. They won't do the normal behavior. They won't go back to the nest. So obviously then you have to you have to let them be. You have to back off and go further away for a safe distance um, and for me that's I think that's what it, that's what it really boils down to like nature and the wildlife comes before the photo for me um, I'd rather come away from the day without a good photo than having disturbed birds from there you know disturbed wildlife from doing the normal behavior because that's not that's just not worth it and then what why what are we doing it all for you know for me, half the enjoyment I get from wildlife photography is actually the learning about the wildlife, the research and going out and scouting for them, finding the wildlife, finding out where they are at, um, and then figuring out a way to get close to them to take photos. And that is just half the pleasure for me with photography. Okay, the mail is back. It's just flown up with some nest. Um, it's just flown up to the nest now with some food. And hopefully when it comes back out, I can manage to get a photo of it.
Sometimes it lands on branches that are really thin. It's very tricky to get focus. And I mentioned this in a previous video as well. It's a good idea then to um, maybe focus on something larger right next to it so that you help help your camera great focus close to it. Um, but also on my Olympus here, um, I can just kind of flick this thing back and then I can manually focus with my lens. Um, that's one of the benefits of shooting with back button focus uh, for other systems. I used to do that with my Canon 100-400. If you shoot with back button focus, that means that you can quickly take over the manual focus here. You don't have to actually switch um, to manual focus. You can just you can just pull the dial, and that's one of the major benefits I think of shooting back button focus. But with the Olympus system, you don't actually have to because they made it so that if you do that, if you just click this focus ring back, then um, it'll allow you to manually fo then the manually focus manual focus takes over. I also set this up so that when I start to focus, it instantly gives me a digital five times zoom, so I get to see the bird a lot closer. And there's also something called uh, focus focus peaking, which means that when I actually get focus on the bird, the bird will shine red wherever I have focus on. So it's just such amazing technology now. great thing is as well, is the way I like to take photos. I don't always like to have them that close. I like to have a bit of distance in my photos and very often when it flies a little bit further away from me and I can include this environment, including some of the oak trees and some of the oak, tre oak trees in the background, some of the leaves and foliage, um, and sometimes some of the bracken here as well, and really just include the habitat that it lives in. It's also a type of photography that I really like and that I really that strive to get better at because it can often actually be quite hard you think that because you don't have to get that close it might be easier but you have to be so careful about everything else that goes into your frame um, so it can often be harder to make a pleasing image where this, the bird is small in frame than it is large in frame uh, and I go over a lot more on my patreon channel if you haven't checked it out um, please do have a look I go over things like, I basically uh, go deeper into three parts of wildlife photography. And that's basically the technical, all the settings and camera with the lens. And then we go into compositions, basically, so basically everything that you choose to include in your frame. And then thirdly is more about the research, the scouting, the finding wildlife and getting close to wildlife. So if you're interested in that, please do have a look and um, you know you can always cancel at any time. Um, and uh, yeah, so please have a look and I'll hopefully I'm gonna get some more photos of this red start. So I just want to say thank you to Zepon so much for giving me this Micro 2 slider which now has a motor on it. So it's actually allowed me to create some what I think is really cool footage for this video. 
Um, I'll show you guys a little bit behind the scenes as well that I've been filming of it in action. You have this really useful app for it now so that I can actually, first of all, I can move it by just kind of dragging this. Just controlling it on my phone like this. But there's also, uh, I can control, I can put in points. Basically, if you see down here, there are these um, points I can put on a one point at one end, a two point in the other end. That's usually what I use it for. You could use it for several different points all along um, the whole kind of slider, but I tend to just use one and two points. So one for one end, and then the second point for the other end. And then I control the time here on the side. And basically what I've been doing today is, when I'm walking into frame, or for instance, I've been sitting here shooting, so I can record the camera, I can go sit down, and I just basically press play, and then it starts moving. You can see here it's really slow, but I can speed that up, and you can set it to go the speed that you want it to. So it packs up quite nicely, comes in a nice bag, I'll show you guys that afterwards, and I can just pack it away in my backpack and take it with me. And it has anything to do with video or even time lapses, this is just a perfect tool. I'll put the link in the description below where you can pick up one of these uh, sliders. So I just want to say thank you so much to Zepon for uh, sending me this and allowing me to try it out in my videos. I will continue to use it in a bit of my footage because I think it makes a really, I think it really adds something to the videos. Um, so let me know what you guys think and um, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye. I've been in